Greetings. I welcome you to our second session on historical church models of a Bible reading lifestyle that transforms life. My name is George Mwange, and our historical, historical figure today is George Mueller, otherwise known as George Mueller of Bristol. No blood relationship with me. <laughs> we have entitled this particular session, A Bible Reading Lifestyle Transforms a Life of Faith. Now, George Mueller's life is exciting to read. It must have been interesting and exciting and enriching to relate with this man. Come with me as we discover and connect the dots that made him mighty in the scriptures and that we are able to remember him even today. He was a German. He was born in 1805 and died in 1898 at the age of 92. He lived almost the entire 19th century. He got converted at the age of 20 after living a prodigal teenage life. Praise the Lord for that. After a while, he became a missionary in Bristol, England. Mueller, in his ministry, set out to demonstrate three things, especially. Number one, that God could be trusted to provide every need of his children simply by looking directly to him. And number two, to encourage believers to take God at his word, that the scriptures say what they mean and they mean what they say. And number three, he set out to inspire and encourage younger men to serve God with simplicity. Now, why did Miller settle especially on these three objectives? It is because he was grieved, he said, that so many believers were harassed and distressed in mind or brought guilt to themselves for their apparent inability to trust in the Lord for their needs. And especially remembering Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 8. So Mueller's overriding passion was to display with open proofs that God could be trusted with normal issues of life. In other words, that God is real, that God answers all kinds of prayer, and that God is trustworthy. But before we look at how the Bible affected this man of God, let us look first at a few of his achievements and then be able to relate them together. Number one, Mueller was able to build five orphan houses that accommodated 2,000 orphans at a time. Throughout his ministry, he cared for more than 15,000 orphans in the process raising by talking to God alone, 100,000 pounds, which is equivalent to about 10 million today. In other words, he never talked to man directly for the needs of these orphanages, including his own ministry. That sounds crazy, and I agree, but it happened. Number two, Mueller started an organization called the Scripture Knowledge Institute at age 28 that distributed Bibles, raised support for missionaries, and distributed books. Distributed Bibles because he wanted the believers to read their Bibles, and distributing books because he wanted them to be encouraged by the writings and the teachings of solid Christian men. Number three, he was an inspiration to many men who served God during this time. Two especially come to mind. One of the men that were affected by Mueller was Charles Spangion, a respected 19th century, century preacher and even very well known today. Perhaps you have read, read a few of his writings. Mueller actually preached in Spangion's church. The number two, Hudson Taylor, the founder of China Inland Mission. Taylor had started this organization because evangelism in China was mostly centered around the seaports where the European missionary, missionaries settled. So Taylor wanted to take the gospel in inland China. So he started this organization specifically. By the way, it still exists today as Overseas Missionary Fellowship International and still preaches the gospel of Christ. And so Hudson Taylor was inspired by George Mueller. In fact, Mueller even supported Taylor financially. Fourthly, George Mueller served as a pastor in one church at Bristol for 66 years without taking a salary. What a, prof a profound man this was. Five, at the ages of 70 to 87, he became a traveling missionary and preached in 42 countries. He always had wanted to become a missionary when he was younger, but for various reasons he was unable to do so. So towards the 
end of his life, 70, 27 years, he gave himself to this task. Number six, which was very personal to George Mueller, is that he never took a loan or went into debt, despite the great financial demands of his ministry. He came to the conviction that whatever he had was what God wanted him to have. He therefore let God know all his needs as soon as the year rose, and then waited on God to meet them at his time. This was indeed extraordinary. So what was the secret of George Mueller? Mueller himself declared that his faith was founded and watered by diligent, prayerful reading and meditation of the Word of God. And he considered the Word of God to be God's communication to his children. He had been inspired to start regular Bible reading when he heard of a brother teaching about the benefits of reading the Word of God regularly. So he decided to take the challenge and he never stopped, never looked back after this. I am inspiring you as George Mueller was inspired then. I hope that you pick up this wonderful lifestyle. Anyway, Mueller started and never looked back. He called it consecutive Bible reading. By the age of 70, it is written in the biographies that George Mueller had been able to read the, his Bible through and through about a hundred times. In fact, it was his testimony when he was 70 that he had read the Bible seven, uh, of a hundred times. But Etty Pearson, who was a very close friend of Mueller's son-in-law, writes in his biography called George Mueller of Bristol, his life of prayer and faith. And he says that by the time George Mueller died at 92, he had been able to read the Bible 200 times. And that means that between the ages of 70 to 92, when he died, that's about 22 years, he had been able to read the Bible another 100 times. And this would be an average of about four times per year, equivalent to about 15 chapters per day. In fact, it is said that at the age of 92, George Mueller would easily read 15 chapters per day. This man really loved his Bible. So he had been totally shaped by the scriptures in his life. So what are some of the lessons that we can be able to learn from this man's life? One, regular and consecutive reading of the word of God. He said, do not neglect or ignore any book. If you do, you will most likely read the word of God out of context and hence misrepresent the truth. Then you will make your own theology and doctrine, which was the pathway to deception. Therefore, this is the lesson. To train ourselves to have a regular, consecutive Bible reading a lifestyle that exposes us to the whole truth. By the way, in our ministry, we give this training where we encourage believers to develop a consistent Bible reading lifestyle. Number two. George Miller taught strongly that the word is God's appointed means of nourishment, that it is the food for the inner man, not prayer. Of course, by this George Miller did not downgrade prayer, for his life was equally known by his prayer life. In fact, this book talks much about the prayer life of George Miller and the number of prayers that God answered that this man prayed. So that the important thing is the balance. The word of God in one hand, and prayer in another. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, the apostle writes there and says that now that you have tested that the Lord is good, crave the pure spiritual milk of the word that by it you may grow. In other words, the word of God is the food, the catalyst by which we grow in our inner man. Number three, we can learn is that judge said that he did not allow or let the word that he read just passed through his mind <laughs> as water through a pipe. But he considered it carefully by careful meditation, pondering over it, and applying it to his heart. That means that time in the word of God is of the essence. And the formula, he would spend two to three hours 
in the morning in prayerful meditation, feeding his spiritual life. And in some occasions, he would spend up to six hours reading, meditating, praying, so that he would be able to spend time with God. In other words, Mueller truly delighted himself in the word of God. Psalm, the psalmist says in Psalm 1 and verse 3, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which fruits in its season, and whose leaf also does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. And this is the lesson. Invest both quality and quantity time in meditating on the word of God. Number four, the fourth lesson we can learn is that George Mueller emphasized to read the Bible always in reference to yourself and your own heart and not for others. That if you read for others, you will not be profited by it. It is only as you are blessed that you become a blessing to others. So that for me, for example, as a husband, I do not read for my wife and my wife does not read for me. As a father, I do not read for my children and my, my children do not read for me. So each reads for themselves. And it is a result of knowing the truth, that the truth now is able to flow from our hearts and bless others. That is what we call ministry. Out of the heart are the issues of life. So the word of God must be allowed, first of all, to change our hearts before we can change the hearts of others. Number six, we can learn. George taught that because the word of God is living and active, reading and meditating will spring in us faith, spring in us joy, spring in us rest, spring in us peace of heart, despite any prevailing circumstances. That therefore means that the word of God is life itself when it enters the heart of man in prayerful meditation. And that is why Mueller said that he did not have the gift of faith as explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but that his faith grew, it sprang because of the word of God as it is written, for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He insisted that this was the grace of God that works in all his children, the word of God being the ground to build upon. If therefore George, he said that he had received the gift of faith, then it would mean that he would not really be able to communicate the way he wanted to communicate, because it would mean that each child of God would have to go to God to ask for the gift of faith. But rather he wanted it to be the faith that grows, that is founded on the word of God, which is available to all the children of God. So this way he hoped to encourage Christians to build their faith by the word of God. Sixthly, Miller taught that the end result of this kind of reading is obedience. That one should accept the written word of God as the direct communication of God's will for all of life. And you know, that is absolutely important, therefore, to practice the word of God. That the end result of interacting with the word of God is to obey. That is what James 1.25 talks about. Jesus himself had said in John 13, 17, Now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So that the measure of our obedience is the measure of our joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the word of God. Will you not join this wonderful teacher who taught both by precept and lifestyle, George Mueller? Will you not test it? Will you not desire it? Will you not pick your Bible? And read it as if it was your necessary food. If you do this, little by little, then Bible reading becomes a lifestyle that transforms your life. And so we can be able to do all that which the Bible says. That whatever we do shall prosper. Because we will have discovered the will of God for our lives in the written word. May the Lord bless you as you continue in this lifestyle. If already you are doing it, or as you start, and make it part and parcel of your life. May the Lord bless you.